with our introductions. Hopefully, Katie can make it back. <laughs> um, she's having a little technical difficulty with her computer doesn't want to stay connected. So hopefully, she can make it back. Uh, we'll start with Libby. Libby, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I live in Minnesota, and I have three kids, and we homeschool. And my oldest is 11. He's got a tank full of tadpoles that are turning into toads and frogs right now, and a little budding lawn mowing business. And uh, I have a nine-year-old who loves roller skating and tree climbing, and a five-year-old who wants his own pet more than anything. And um, we live in an intentional Christian community in the Frogtown neighborhood of St. Paul. And um, I teach from home, and um, I came to Simplified Organization from a place of uh, chronic crisis. I kept having everything just kept sliding into crisis, and it was really a godsend. Thank you. Hey, Jen, you want to introduce yourself? Oh, uh, sure. Um, I am the mom of eight kids. The oldest is 15, youngest is four. And um, I was homeschooled myself, so we've homeschooled always from the beginning. And we live in Tennessee, out in the country, way, way, way out in the country, on 17 acres. And I'm sort of a planner, organizer by nature, but so I just have gobbled up everything of yours for the last few years <laughs> because it just all makes such great sense and just fits so nicely into categories. And, and so it has been a godsend for me, too. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and Katie, can you introduce yourself? Sure. I'm sorry, my computer keeps kicking me out, so we're just introducing ourselves now, is that right? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, my name is Katie Newby, and I have three children, ages seven, five, and two. And we homeschool we, um, with the Charlotte Mason Method, and my husband and I have been married for 11 years. And I... Um, like being organized, but I'm not as organized as I want to be. <laughs> um, and I too appreciate um, Misty's um, wisdom, and I, I love Work the Plan. I've almost finished with it, but it's been really helpful for me. So, oh, thank you. All right, and Amber, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Amber Vanderpoel, and I live in California, Northern California, um, up in the mountains. We live on 10 acres, and I have five kids, we, ranging in age from 14 down to two. Um, I've always been kind of an organization, just I don't know, geek, I guess, and wanting to read a lot of the different things about it, but had and wanted to just devise this perfect system, and I could never quite get everything together to get that figured out what that was going to be, and I. Um, I kind of when I when this you first released your course, I've been watching, following you for I don't know probably three years I guess at this point maybe longer than that I don't know, um, and I thought oh well, you know I must know all of this already you know I've been reading all a lot of these same things she's reading and but no there's there's a really <laughs> uh, Misty has a real genius here so <laughs> oh, thank um, you this was going to be like this lauding Misty sort of uh, <laughs> like I did not ask them to do this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and but through what I've learned from this, and so I homeschool, I use Charlotte Mason's um, philosophy of education as well, and I've been able to, because I'm just more on top of things and such, I've been able to branch out into different areas and start doing, like I'm, I've been organizing some different online groups, we're doing uh, Charlotte Mason study groups, and um, working with a, a group of women that called uh, Charlotte Mason West for planning. Um, some retreats and conferences on the West Coast, and so, and I really don't think I would be able to do these things if I just wasn't, I didn't have all these tools in place that I have in place, which is because I did the Simplified Organization course last year. Yeah, you have some big projects on your plate right now. <laughs> Those conferences have to be a lot of details. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you guys, and thank you for joining me here. Um, Okay, so you could be thinking, we're going to move on to the, our first point in our outline, but be thinking of a couple of these questions that people have already asked. Um, how do you plan time in your day for holding your kids accountable to what they're supposed to be doing, especially older kids? Work that into your plan for the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, how to continue enthusiasm with younger kids when, you know, you kind of feel like you've already done that, you know, you have 
the big spread, and I th it, it is easier to be all gung ho on the next step with those oldest ones and how to kind of keep up the excitement for the younger kids too. So, and keep those thoughts in your mind as you as we go on. Um, so I wanted to ask each of you first, and we'll kind of um, go down the line. I don't know if you guys are in the same order for on your screens as you are on my screen, but we'll do that same order that we did with introductions. And I was wondering, what has been the single most helpful concept or practice um, in planning at your day and keeping things running? Um, what concept has made the biggest impact on your day or your attitude or how you thought? Um, what what would you say was like the the key thing that helped things click? Libby, you want to start? So um, I think when I started Simplified Organization, I was frustrated. I I wanted to get my whole life in order and clean the whole house and have a whole new system. And I was frustrated that it started with attitude pieces <laughs> and with checking your attitude and little things like smiling and doing some tiny little thing to rescue your day. And I think it's all so holistic. It's hard to separate it out. But I think that the the attitude pieces have ended up being the most important to me because I didn't realize that what was sabotaging me was getting kind of marooned in the middle of, of my day and my plans and being totally overwhelmed and mm -hmm. discouraged. And that I would go kind of into a cycle of of judging myself and panicking and that that was really paralyzing to me and that that was what was preventing me from being able to do what I needed to do. So all those attitude pieces that are just throughout the whole, I think there's an attitude um, element to every module of all of your different systems, but I think that those have ended up yielding the most fruit for me and I, but all it's hard to separate it out because you pull on one string and all the others are all kind of <laughs> woven into it. Um, but I think that not getting discouraged and trying to run truer scripts in my head and trying to be able to return in an empowered, positive, truthful way to cheerfully doing the work I need to do instead of um, instead of getting stuck has been the most significant thing for me. Are you guys missing the sound? Yes. I missed you. We can't, can't hear you. I that's we you can't hear you. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I, say, I hear some squabbling up there, so I was going to pass it off to Jen next. <laughs> uh, because I and go run and deal with the reason why I muted my microphone. <laughs> 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 but yes, I would say that is the reason why each piece has that attitude piece is because I definitely found um, that... I wanted the quick fix, like just do this and everything will suddenly be magical. And But the roadblock that kept getting in my way was my own attitude about it all and getting frustrated and angry. And then, yeah, it's just paralyzing. You just, just want to collapse in a heap and go back to bed. <laughs> so how about you, Jen? What have, what's kind of been the, the key thing for you? Um, actually, I had to think about that really hard because I well, I read your blog for a couple of years before the courses came out, and so I had already been in. I read your ebooks, um, so a lot of the principles had already been soaking into my head, and but still, the courses just really did such a good job of going step by step and just really keeping it all so clear and focused and breaking it down. So I, I definitely the attitude was a big one. And then the other one, I think, is just how you, um, you know, we, we deal with so much coming in at us that we're responsible for. Mm -hmm. And so it really helps to categorize it by vocation and to just kind of helps cut away the fluff what we don't need to be doing and focus on what we do need to be doing. And then the whole, then that helps with knowing how to do the next right best thing. And it just brings a lot of clarity. And my brain kind of thinks in categories 
anyhow. So I really have appreciated that. It just kind of streamlines it all. It makes it easy to, even, even though it all still is kind of flowing into one person, it's just easy to uh, divide it up and you can see where you need to focus things better. And so that's been really helpful. Oh, good. Yeah, and I'll put the link in there. The, uh, the guide for figuring out your vocations is a free guide. So I'll pop that in there if anyone wants to take a look at that. I definitely think in categories also. <laughs> like I just want to put, put things in their little boxes. Yes. And, um, you know, a lot of the organization stuff out there wants you to write mission statements. And so I really struggled with that for a long time on wanting one and then thinking it was stupid. <laughs> waffling back and forth between those two. And kind of vocations was my like synthesis of, well, we do need to figure out, how, like, how do you figure out balance and knowing where your attention should be and then evaluating, well, where is my time and energy going and um, is it something that fits into what I should be doing? And so it's kind of the vocations is that framework for figuring that out. Yeah, and I think it helps with the overwhelm, you know, because instead of just having, like, this whole big, huge one to-do list, mm -hmm. you can break it down. And the other thing that really helps, too, is the breaking things down into are they projects or are they, you know, one-time tasks. Or so that was another big, huge help. So just, yeah. All right, awesome. Thank you. And Katie, how about you? Um, I really... A light bulb kind of went on for me when you I was in the work to plan course and you talked about interval planning that was huge for me because I am a tweaker like I like you love making a plan I love spreadsheets and word documents and I can just sit and make them pretty and you know organ put everything in the right box and then it never gets done because I'm constantly doing that and so um, the idea of making a plan okay I'm gonna try this for six weeks and see how it works. And then, you know, you, you're kind of taking notes during that six weeks trying to, what is working, what isn't, but then you wait to make the new plan or make the new spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I love that because then I also have a hard time committing in general. So, like, I'm only committing for six weeks. It's not like whatever I'm choosing to do, I have to do forever. So, mm -hmm. I just, that was a really big help for me. I just kind of gets me out of planning mode for those six weeks, then I can just make a plan and then that I can do it, well, in theory, and then, you know, revisit it later. So I really liked that idea. I'd never heard that before, so I thought that was really good. Yeah. I also appreciate the vocations thing, too, because I think, like she said, you know, it can be overwhelming, all the things you need to do, and if you can sort of figure out what your roles are and then just pick a few things for each of those roles, really helpful in, in figuring out where your priorities need to be. So. Focusing, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The interval, it was real, the interval thing kind of really came out of the six weeks on, one week off school mm -hmm. calendar that we'd already been doing. My mom did that for a little bit when we were homeschooled and um, when I was younger. Six weeks on, one week off. Um, and I started, you know, maybe I could apply this just to everything. And so that's kind of where interval planning came from, too. Because, yes, I just wanted to, okay, that didn't, I didn't work the plan. The problem must be the formatting of my list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's work on that instead of, like, actually doing anything. <laughs> okay, I can only totally redo the formatting of everything once every six weeks. <laughs> well, that's something for me, it's easier to control that, like I, I feel like that's comfortable, like I can just sit and do that instead of like actually doing the hard work of mm -hmm. the plan that you, yeah, so. <laughs> it's, well, you can see a change after you reformat your list, it looks different. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that always the case with dishes and laundry. <laughs> How about you, Amber? Uh, the, the interval plan has definitely been great. And, you know, I tried to implement that before I did the course, and I just couldn't quite, I don't know, there was something about it, I couldn't quite get it to work, but then when I went through the course and I 
went through the materials and that, there were some things that just clicked for me in that that really made that make so much more sense. And um, I've been using that successfully as well. It's been just such a key part of what I do. But you know, I think the, the most single most helpful concept for me is probably is a, is a little contradictory when I was thinking about this. It's like, well, it's about me, but it's not about me. But in that I need mm -hmm. to be willing to take care of myself and kind of step up the plate and do the things that I need to do to to be healthy and to be like, okay, which you know it means I need to be taking a walk in the morning and I need to have a little bit of downtime and I need to have time to be able to do my own reading and do some of these different things. Um, but the, the reason I do them is not just to please myself or to serve myself, but it's so that I can give more. Um, and that because there's the, one of the things I really like about Simple Plate Organization is like, we're talking about is there's a lot about attitude, but also a lot about service, and which goes along with our vocation of that we're not here just to amuse ourselves or just to please ourselves, but we're here to be able to serve in our families and serve in a, in a wider sphere as well, um, it, be it extended family or church or just community or whatever. That And if we're just running around all the time and not really keeping on top of things and always feeling like we're just drowning, um, we just can't do that. We can't live out our lives as fully as I think we're meant to live out our lives. Um, and so I it really... And just to have that that mindset shift of that, okay, you know, I'm important enough to be able to do a few things that just need that to be done to be able to kind of keep myself working, so that really I can offer so much more to my family. Um, that that was mm -hmm. that really had made a huge difference for me. Good. Yeah, there was after my fourth was born, he was an awful sleeper. <laughs> I think he was just growing so fast <laughs> that he had to eat round the clock for his whole life. <laughs> um, and um, so I was definitely sleep deprived, and I, there was a hormonal baby blues thing going on too. And it's like there was my health and energy was so low that my perception of what was actually happening in my house was totally skewed. You know, it was, yeah. you know, we were really kind, we were in survival mode, but it wasn't horrible, but it felt horrible. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time just finally ex ex trying to explain to my husband, like, what I see, like, and the laundry and the, and, the, and it's all terrible and horrible. And I remember saying, you, it's pre this is pretty normal. Like you're doing fine, and of course, then you know you're all hormonal. And what I heard was, you're always in chaos. You know, this is. Just <laughs> 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 I was like, okay, I am clearly not hearing the you know what I'm supposed to be. My perspective is all messed up, mm -hmm. and just yeah, started things like taking a walk, making sure I'm drinking enough water. Yes, I started exactly. taking B complex vitamin and just like okay, I I feel like a person again and I can actually respond so much better to all the incoming requests and feedback that I'm getting when yeah I I have addressed underlying health and energy problems. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, we have okay. So we have Heather's asking a question, and I'll let you guys chime in on this because it's a little. Um, it, she says that she's done work the plan. Would simplified organization still be helpful? Uh, I haven't done either. Have any of us done both of them? I have. Okay. What do you think? I think I did uh, the simplified organization first, and um, then work the plan when it came out. I think it's helpful because I think with that you kind of go more into the why a little bit more and then work the plan is kind of more the nitty gritty how, all the details. So I think they can each stand alone but I think they really complement each other too. I think I would, if I was going to do it, I did simplified organization first and then work the plan when it came out as a seventh module and I think if I was going to do it again I would do work the plan first because it sort of puts in all the organizational structural pieces and um, just, to, just to get those all lined up, that you have your calendar and you have your task management system and, all the, and your vocation statements. And I think simplified 
organization is where you actually tackle all of your issues in your life and in your house, and you actually get everything in order, which took me forever. I felt like I was a remedial student because I was because I was starting from such a place of chaos. But um, I think they're I think they really complement each other wonderfully. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I started Work the Plan. I thought simplified organization needed a little bit more nitty gritty, but I also heard from a couple of people like they they wanted to do something, but their life wasn't chaos or falling apart, so they did, weren't sure they needed simplified organization. <laughs> I said, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I can make a smaller little something that's just really mostly practical. It's all assuming the same principles. But it doesn't go as deep. It's a, it stays a little bit more surface. You know, you, is, you're still doing is work. The, is work what? the plan just the organizational pieces? Yeah. And the voc and the vocations. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of more the theoretical concepts in their essentials. Yeah. And in simplified yeah. organization, you do huge things like what are your health goals? Work on them and get them sorted <laughs> out. Mm -hmm. And Clean your whole house. Get on top of your whole laundry system. Don't have any extra clothes that you don't need. Like it's, it, it's really everything. It gets to all of your systems, all of your ministry, all of your work, all your projects. You get a chance if you want to to go through all all that stuff. So it's just really comprehensive. Yeah, yeah. You can work through work the plan a lot more quickly. And just kind of get the, it's more like getting your plan, like making a plan pieces, uh, rolling and working. And whereas simplified organization, yeah, is tackling your whole, the whole big picture of your life and making sure it's working for you. And work the plan is more like, okay, so you need to have a calendar and you need to have notes and you need to have your to-do lists and here's how to make that actually helpful in the midst of the day-to-day. -day. It pretty much just tackles that piece in a lot more practical way. Or at least that's what I intended when I wrote it. <laughs> One of the things I really appreciate about what you've done too, Misty, is that you're not so prescriptive in that you say, okay, well, you need to have a calendar, you need to have a to-do list, and this is exactly what you have to do. You need to have these particular, you know, this particular tech tool or this particular paper thing. And it's more like, oh, well, here's options, and you need to have this high-level concept and here's different ways to implement this. Figure out what works for you. And I really, really appreciate that about what you do, Misty. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I don't think it works for any personality. Any, that's what I love too. I, t I recommend your stuff to a lot of people. That's what I say. This is something that can be tweaked to fit anybody. It's not just a one size. You know, it's not just this is the only way to do it. I think that's what's so brilliant about it. Not just tweaked, but the way that it's set up. It's from beginning to end. Yeah. You create your own system that's tailored to your life. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not an organized, organized person at all, and this gave me the scaffolding to figure out what I was doing. And come, I, I think it's just so dynamic because it's not trying to make your life fit into this, into any kind of brand. But mm -hmm. looking at what's actually going on in my life, what are my responsibilities and my gifts and my callings and where is the life here and where is God and where are the challenges and finding a way to do your own best with it. Oh, thank you, guys. That's good. That's what I wanted. So I'm so happy to hear. <laughs> uh, so I have a couple of people asking that they already have both. And what would you guys recommend for the order for working things in? Which one first? So someone already said work the plan first, then simplified organization. Um, I don't and know. Then, I guess work the plan is good for like getting the ball rolling. But I really like simplified organization because um, you do, like you know, your little audio messages in there are very much like a shot in the arm. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of just really encouraging into why we're doing this. So, I don't know. It could go either way. I, I did simplified organization first because that's what was first. And then I did work the plan when it came out. Um, I don't know. It could go either way, really. I would probably start with simplified organization just because I kind of feel like it lays the groundwork. But then I'm also kind of impatient. I like to just get things going. So, the other half of me would say start with work the plan. <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> 
And I also found that like going into simple or simplified organization, I wouldn't have said, oh yeah, I definitely have attitude issues about it. It's like I don't really mind doing laundry. I don't really mind cleaning and you know that which I know is weird, but I just kind of accept them and we move on and I've been like that for quite a while. Probably ever since I, I washed laundry by hand for about two months when we were living on the property and so wow. we were just camping. And once once you do something like that, your washing machine, you're just like Thank you, Lord, for my washing machine. <laughs> and so, um, so if any, you know, that's that's my tip. If you really are grum grumpy about laundry, just do it by hand for a couple months, and really, you'll you'll just be thankful. For life, so. um, anyway, but that um, even still in that, I realized that there, you know, there are attitude issues that were blocking me from doing things that need to do and they really had more to do with like myself and take, like I was talking about earlier about taking care of myself so that I could be able to serve better um, which was kind of an attitude issue that I just didn't even really think about as an attitude issue until it started coming up through Simple Aid Organizations so um, I have, I actually, I have worked the plan, I haven't even looked at it yet honestly because I've just, everything's just kind of going really well so I don't know, I feel like maybe I should but <laughs> <laughs> She has something that's working <laughs> Let's see. Okay, there's someone here with a good question. How do you deal with your plan being derailed? I find it hard to get back on track. That's that's a real life question, right? And that happens to us all. So what do you do when the plan gets derailed? Anyone? Um, um I uh, I usually just try to come back into um, where my next kind of point is. So if I just sort of lose a big chunk of time, I just kind of give myself permission to go, okay, well, that stuff didn't happen. Was there anything on here that absolutely had to happen on this day? And then I will move something for later in the day and put that there so that I can um, make that time happen and, and just you know, give myself the permission and the grace to just move on and say, okay, well, that chunk didn't happen today, and either it's not going to happen this week, or it's just not going to happen today, or maybe it's just never going to happen because it's not supposed to happen. Um, and just to let go and not feel so incredibly married to the plan that, that I have that I can't then also just roll with whatever is, it happen, happens in the course of my day, because that's the day that I'm supposed to have. <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. despite what my paper and my, you know, to-doist and everything else might say. Yep, that's about the rest of you. Roll with the punches. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel like Misty deals with that really extensively in both of the programs and Work the Plan and in Simplified Organization. Um, I think the concept of iteration, the, of repeating something, trying to get successively closer to your goal is a really helpful concept for um, for when things don't go as planned, knowing that you get to try again later and that mm -hmm. that you have a larger view of success than just, just this day working and that we're not just trying to make um, everything happen correctly in one day. Um, yeah, I feel like you just return to that concept of what you do when real life happens. That, that's a part of the plan. Real life is a part of the plan. And knowing what your real vocations are, instead of just having boxes to check, helps to focus on on the actual goals instead of on just all the lo logistical pieces. Yeah. Like if, you're, if your vocation is homemaker, and so that puts, you know, a lot of like cleaning or just get stuff done, things on the to-do list. But really the vision of homemaker is creating a home atmosphere for your family, then that helps you when you have those, deep, you know, when your checklist can't get done to realize, but I'm fulfilling my vocation actually by paying attention to the, you know, my child's emergency or whatever and responding well to them instead of getting my checklist done. Um, mm -hmm. that, yeah. Because I think, I don't know, I think you, you can tell me if you agree or not, but I think that our plans getting derailed happens more often than the plans don't get derailed. <laughs> well, and that, that concept of, that concept changes everything. What you were, what you were just saying about um, uh, of, of the vocation. If your vocation is a welcoming atmosphere, like in Charlotte Mason, we're Charlotte Mason too, 
um, then to, to, to focus on whatever disaster just happened or whatever couldn't happen and the, the child couldn't do or I couldn't do and at the expense of our relationships or of the kind of a home and family that we want to be and the way that we want to act towards each other is entirely missing the point. So keeping first and foremost what our atmosphere we're creating is um, is, is just going to uh, flow out into everything else and, and really put into perspective those small things um, can put themselves where they need to be and you don't have to you don't have to worry about it and the whole system just kind of I feel like keeps teaching me again and again how not to get stressed out about that how not to panic and not to go down this road of trying to hammer everybody into place or trying to berate myself for how things aren't the way I want them to be that concept of setting the stage and clearing to neutral that the whole point of all of the cleaning and organization is, is is the living that we're doing inside of it and our relationships with one another um, puts everything else right. Thank you. Yeah, that is definitely the case. <laughs> and that's what it, it seemed like whenever I made plans, that's exactly what happened. Like the plan was this uh, straight jacket or something that just made me angry and frustrated and just made me treat my kids like come on come on come on come on come on <laughs> this is so then it's easy to just try to give up on planning and I did or cleaning you know if if my cleaning checklist is making me frustrated with life then maybe I should just try not cleaning and uh, that didn't work out very well <laughs> for me <laughs> Also, the review processes, if you're reviewing a little reviews daily and the weekly review and then the interview interval review at seasonal um, junctures, you know you're going to get to come back and figure out what went wrong. Yeah. So it, yeah. it makes you not need to be fixing all the time, but you can just move on. And mm -hmm. I found that really helpful. All right. Let's see. Our next... Our next point was going to be, what does your planner and planning routine look like? So I'm really excited for this part because I know we have a lot of different ideas here, or different planning implementations. And you know, a lot of times when you look at how to plan um, instructions or you know, GTD or different tutorials or planners that are out there, especially planners, if you just buy a planner, it then you have to like use it in the way that it is trying to tell you to use it. And sometimes it works for someone and sometimes it doesn't. And um, what you need is a planner that's attractive to you and works for you, but it takes some tweaking, some iterations to figure that out. And so I'm really excited to hear what you guys have for a planner um, because it's all very different and it works for you and I think that if everyone gets um, so people can get different ideas and then make it something that actually works for them so uh, I think can, can yes. I not go first in this part oh sure <laughs> <laughs> okay um, thank so, you Libby has a paper <coughs> planner, and we have pictures of hers that we'll screen share when she does hers. And we were going to do Jen after Libby because she has an all digital, and she's going to screen share. So Amber, how about you? You can go first. Okay. Um, so I do a hybrid approach because I found that some things work better for me on paper, and some things work better uh, electronically. So. Um, so my paper things are my menu plan is in paper because, I don't know, it just works better that way. If I do it on the computer, I just forget about it. It's like, I plan menus? What? Why didn't somebody tell me? Um, so I, I just, I do it two weeks at a time. Um, I just print out a really simple, uh, you know, tablet, uh, you know, just a little thing that I did on pages, a little table. Um, I plan, um, well, during the school year, I plan, plan breakfast, lunch, and dinner for two weeks. During the summer, I just do breakfasts and dinners. Um, and then I have a little, uh, it's actually a picture frame with just scrapbook paper behind it, a plain sort of thing, and I write up the week's menu in for breakfast and dinner on that. And so it's posted, the family can see it, 
um, and that works really well. Uh, the, and the other thing I do on paper uh, is my weekly time budget. So during my weekly review, I have to do that on paper, and it drives me crazy sometimes because you know I'm just sitting there drawing, you know, drawing on these little boxes. But if I do it on the computer, I'm much less realistic about how much time things actually take. Um, and I'm much more likely to try to just cram more and more things into the boxes because the boxes get bigger, whereas on paper they don't get bigger. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm limited. They have to be that amount of time. Um, and so I'm much, much more realistic. And I'm much more likely, there's something about the physical act of drawing it and drawing all these little you know, squares and, and my rectangles and labeling things um, that makes me much more... Uh, Likely, it's like I'm visualizing my entire week as I'm doing it as well, um, and so I really get a much better sense of how things are going to flow through my whole week. Um, and I just find that that's been a really, and it, I've gotten to the point where I can usually do my weekly time, my the time budget part takes about 20 minutes, um, and it's it's so worth it because I'm really just I'm visualizing my my whole week and drawing it all out. And I don't know that I've ever had a week yet where it really went exactly like that. Um, but, you know, it really goes mostly like that, and it, in even the fact that I have visualized what's on there, I can also kind of then swap things around in that as well, as, as just things change and to be able to pick up things and to be able to go, okay, well, that wasn't really an essential thing that needed to happen this week, but it was nice to be able to do that, but this other essential thing needs to happen there, so, okay, you know, now I'll get back and I'll just change how it's marked. So then the digital pieces that I use, um, my calendar is on Google Calendar, so I can share it easily with my husband. Um, and then, uh, so that's just all well, my, you know, appointments and whatever, um, out of the house type things. Um, I use Todoist, and I absolutely love Todoist. One of the things that I found to be really helpful is I, when I'm doing my interval review, I mark a bunch of things as at um, with a my at the little at sign because that groups them together at this interval. And then I also have at this week. And so when I do my weekly review, I look at my interval stuff and I take my, I just identify like 10 things from my interval list and put them into my this week list. Um, and that's what I used to do, just be able to put things. Um, and then when I'm doing my, e my evening review, I'm just looking at my this week things and saying, okay, those are the things I need to be doing for my various other extra stuff that goes into Todoist. Um, so I, I, I've been using Todoist a lot for over, I guess, about a year now. Yeah, it's probably over a year now. Um, and my, my point, I'm, it has a little point score thing, and so I'm at the second highest level. I'm almost at whatever their, you know, master super duper, duper guru <laughs> thing is. But, um, <laughs> um, let's see, I'm trying to think what else. And then I use Evernote. That's where I put my all my interval plans um, and my review things. My Sunday maybe things are also in Todoist as well. Okay. I think those are my major components. So Eileen is asking, do you include your daily goal action items on your to-do list? Like your top uh, things for the day? Yeah, so my top things for the day would be on there. Um, the only thing I don't put on there would be, I have, um, well, I have a, usually what I do is I have a habit for an interval, and I don't feel like I've managed to solidify I have three habits that I for this year so far that I felt like okay these are the most important things that I need to do to make my day so much better and I'm really just they're so fundamental but they're also really hard for me to do so um, one of them I I I've got put down pretty well but the other two I'm still working on so it's take a daily walk um, serve dinner by 5:45 and make sure you know electronic devices book you know light whatever is off by 9:45 um, so. Those are those things, three key things. And so I don't have those on my um, to-doist list, but I do use a habit tracker um, so that I'm, I'm using those three ones. Uh, and, oh, I'm using, oh, what is it called? Um, I just changed to a newer one, and now, of course, I can't remember what it's called. I don't think I have my phone with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really like it, though. <laughs> uh, and but so then everything else goes on my uh, to do list checklist. Yes, and then you know one other thing I, sh I forgot to mention is that because I don't like to always be staring at my phone because sometimes I find that if I pull my phone out to open to doist and instead it's like oh Instagram. Um, <laughs> I, I also as part of my evening review 
I take those things that are in Todoist and I write them up and I have one of those little whiteboards that just goes on my refrigerator. Um, and I have the little dividers in it like Misty's daily index card, but I have it on this little whiteboard. Um, so I use that for writing down those things that, that I want to do for the day so that I have something that I can look at of what needs to be done um, without having to pull out my phone. But also then, and then I also get the joy of actually checking things off on my phone too. And then so in the evening review, I kind of do it throughout the day, I'll be checking things off. And then when I'm doing my evening review, I'll check off the things that I haven't, that I did do during the day, you know, move stuff around, whatever. Um, so I, I do use that sort of um, daily and fixed card thing as well. It is, it's easier to just have something that you can glance at instead of having, you know, pull out, push a button, <laughs> do mm. things, then look at it. And then you get to check it off twice, right? You have That's four. Cool. That's a really yeah. cool. yeah. <laughs> Extra satisfying. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, Libby, are you ready? Sure. All right. Thank you for not making me go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Libby, I'm going to pop the pictures up while Libby explains... So Libby uses all paper with post-it notes. Let's see. This is the last slide. <laughs> oh, okay. So um, here we go. Oh, I here. started. Here's the beginning. Go ahead. Okay. So I started. I I just can't handle using electronic stuff. It would be I am too tempted by going down little rabbit trails, and it's too much of a distraction for me. So I've stuck to all paper systems because it's just better for my life. Like not having junk food in the house. I need to limit how much I interact with the electronic world. Um, but I found that what was happening, this particular picture, everything's all crazy looking, but um, what was happening was I just ended up with lots of pages of things that there was tons of crossed out stuff. And I've used a bullet journal at different times and different planner systems. And um, I was having too much, too many things crossed out. And I like, it was appealing to me as I read about Misty's digital paperless approach. Um, it was so appealing that you just, you can just check boxes or, you know, check off the, the items and they're done and they're gone and you don't have to rearrange everything or rewrite whole pages. And so I wanted that kind of flexibility. I also found that I have a lot of, I have trouble categorizing things and knowing where to put things. Like my filing system is always a mess because I can't figure out, does this go with this child or with the healthcare things or how do I file things? So I wanted a system that was flexible enough that if I put things in the wrong place, I didn't have to do a bunch of work recopying things or reorganizing stuff to set it right again. Because a lot of times I don't know right away where something goes until I've lived with it for a while, but then it would take too much work to rearrange things. So that's why I started using Post-its. And I kind of got the idea too from Layla Lawler's blog on like mother, like daughter. She talked about using Post-its and I thought, oh, this is good. Um, so I have a binder that I make the pages for myself. And um, in the binder I have, um, I can't see on my computer, it's very big, but I guess I can see it in real life here. Um, I have like a full letter size sheet of paper or sometimes even a legal one if you want it extra long. And so I can unfold it to have extra space. And so I can put on post-its, like I'll do this for the kids. I'll have a different color of post-it for each kid for the things that they need to do. When we have a shorter list, sometimes they have long checklists on their clipboards, but like if, um, if they just have a few things to do, I'll write out their list on little post-its and then they can just move the post-its to the done side um, when they're done. And um, there's various different ways that I've used post-its for projects and things in order to keep my list from being so cluttered. Um, because I can just, and, and there are larger post-its that have space for more items on them, but they're still little, kind of like using the index card for your daily, um, for your daily plan. It's little, so it, it limits yourself to having a small note. So I have different sizes of post-its that I use, and I have used them for my task management system, where you can just have, like for, for today or for this week, I have these things that I have to do, and I can just see them and easily move them to the done side or just stick them straight in the recycling, and they're out of my life, and I don't have to ever look at them or be confused by them again, by that visual clutter. 
So um, do you want to go to the next slide? Yeah. So this one right here, this black design page is like cardstock that's folded over? Yeah. It's, and I just hole punched on the side of it. And I used that just for some visual unity. I had a, um, a bunch of that that someone had given me. And I used those for a, a similar little fold over paper thing for all kinds of different sections in my planner to make it more useful. So this is an example of project notes. This is um, my section of my planner for our house. And we were redoing our bathroom. And um, I have various notes and to-do lists on Post-its and on sheets of paper. And I can just fold all the sheets that go inside of the house plans up inside of that um, decorative cardstock. I can just fold it over and it's all contained in there like a folder. Um, and so that just another way of the planner itself not being visually cluttered. I don't have to flip through a bunch of loose pages, but they're all kind of tucked in there. And so I have different pages for, um, for the different rooms of our house and the different things that we're working on. Um, and I can, like, a, often for a to-do list, then I'll have just a little post-it note of the things that are happening on that particular project. And I can go through it sort of just easily. Um, I think that covers that one. So, I've, yeah, I've used it yeah. for lots of different versions of project notes because I found that my project notes would just turn into a big mess. And it helped um, to put little items that weren't going to, that I didn't want to be archived. I didn't want them forever um, on my plans, but I, so a lot of times those will go on a little list in a, on a post-it and then I can peel it off and stick it somewhere else or even put it on my daily index card. Like I'll have a post-it of things that we need to get at Menards. And so I can just peel that off and put it on my card for the day. This is my vocation statement um, sheet and, uh, that I just have right behind my weekly review list. And so I can just easily look at it and I have my eyes fall on it as I'm flipping towards other things, which is helpful to me. Yeah. And it's pretty. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and you can see there uh, facing the vocation statement. Can you go back? Facing the vocation statement is the back of my weekly review sheet. Um, and I just, I kind of end up making a new weekly review sheet every interval. But um, this last interval, I was uh, I have a space for writing term notes, so I'll write uh, exam questions that come up in the daily reading, things that I want to do in our, our exams at the end of the term, um, or books that we finish that I want to record. Anything that I want to go in my long-term homeschool notes, I can just put on the back of my weekly review sheet. If I don't get to it right away, I'll just forget about it. I often, yeah. it just goes right out of my head after it happens. And I also have been using that as a part of my daily and weekly process just for keeping track of what's working and what's not. Um, so if, if any good kind of thing happens, the triumph prompt helps me to take note of it. And if there's something that's difficult, I can put that in. Um, and then that gives me a chance to come back to it later. It's part of the ubiquitous capture concepts to come back to it later and be able to think at my weekly break or even in the evening or at the, I'll save all these weekly review sheets in the back of my planner um, and then I'll see it again at the at my interval break when I'm planning out the next interval and be able to kind of see, oh yeah, we were having a lot of uh, frustration or tears about that or this was a trial to me often and I'll be able to um, pull it back up and think about what was going on with that. Mm, that's a great idea. I love that. And so the, this is the other side of that sheet that had trials and triumphs on it. And it's my weekly review. And it's in the back of my planner just because I'm left-handed. So it's easier for me to flip to and write, write on it there. And I have a spot for my daily index card. And um, the thing that says steady on, that's sort of my theme and the larger conceptual things I'm working on. Um, and that's just on a little like hat folded over index card that can flip over and my large goals for the season are on the other side of it. And um, uh, so it's just my weekly review sheet. And I have little boxes that I can fill in for different loads of laundry and the different steps of the process with them and a section for things we're studying and things that are happening with the house and things that are happening in the garden and my projects and the different habit things I'm working on. And I write down all the different books that we're going through for chapters that we get through and check them off as I go along. So I have a 
uh, a bunch of those, and they're all right there. And when the week is over, I just unclip the binder and pull off the top one, and the next one's underneath. And I can just fill in the dates and the projects uh, during my weekly review. And then facing that weekly review is just a little um, half size, uh, like legal pad, the little yellow legal pad. And I just use that as my catch all notebook. I guess it's where I write um, a brain dump or I'll take notes for something on it. But I just go through whatever pages are written on that. I fold them over behind as I'm done. And then during the weekly review or, or more frequently if there's more stuff or less frequently if if I can't get to it in time. But I do go through everything on there. And then once I've gone through and sorted out all those thoughts, I can just tear out the top page and recycle it. Um, so I have I have that. That's part of my capture plan. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, this is uh, my index card wallet. It's not much to look at, but it lives in my pocket at, because I just need uh, something to always take notes on. I don't want to have my planner with me all the time. So like how most people, if you're doing digital and you have your phone with you, and just any time you can write that down, write down that book, write down that idea, write down that I need to get to that and not forget to pick it up. I have a pencil and a paper that is always with me. That's and cool. Blank so that's index cards. Leather? Is that made out of leather? It is made out of leather. You can cool. use anything for it. There are commercial um, uh, index card folios. can't remember if they come with Franklin Covey or some other system, but they sell them at stationery stores or I think Office Max or Staples has something like that, and this is uh, my version of it. Yeah, so this is a picture of a card being used in in it, right? Yeah, that's, that's the outside of it, and I can just stick my oh, daily okay. index card on the outside so that I don't even have to open it up to just quickly see and remember, oh yes, that's happening at 2 o'clock, or that was the lesson I had to get to, or whatever it is. And I just follow your um, format for daily index card I really like. So I write down any appointments I have that day and things that I have to get done. Cool. And, yeah. And I'll pop the link in from my post on in the daily index card here while you're talking about mm -hmm. this one. And I, I do also use a bullet journal, but I use it more for, um, like, prayers and actual journaling things and things that I want to keep. I, I didn't like when my bullet journal was getting all clogged up with to-do lists and just things that I didn't want to keep. It made me go through that notebook too quickly, and it was just full of all kinds of stuff that I didn't want to hang on to. I didn't want – so I kind of use my bullet journal more for um, – archival things for actual like art or ideas that I want to save or things that I'm processing and it's just much more private and personal. And then what was the picture that you had on there? Um, oh, the front of my planner. Um, that's just the front of my planner. So I have little index cards with all kinds of little things that have come out of Simplified Organization. There's a like a, my format for my food plan that I make every week and kind of my daily time budget, like normal day schedule and um, uh, some of the quotes that I use and want to hang on to, there's individual goals for different vocations and just other things that I want to have handy are slipped in there in those little, it's a it's a Franklin Covey planner that I got at a thrift store and they have little pockets for all kinds of things. So I have everything handy that I, that I need so I don't have to go hunting for it ever. And uh, you can see I just keep all the post-its stuck inside of a page of the planner and I've got the bigger ones have space to really run a list of things. There's all kinds of post-its. And so uh, I was worried about how expensive post-its are. And my husband said, Libby, you are so thrifty. It's OK. You can buy post-its. So <laughs> I got all the post-its I wanted. And now I have a good several years supply worth of post-its in my desk drawer. <laughs> but I also have them handy so that because something like needing to go and find something in a desk drawer is the kind of thing that can keep me from doing larger things that I want to do in life. So I yep. just have a bunch waiting there ready for me. And sometimes I've even found post-it notes on clearance, too. So if you know that you use yeah. them, then you can keep your right. eyes open and find them when they're a good deal. They'll go on sale. Yeah, it's kind of a loss leader, and then you can stock up. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, Libby. That's awesome how you've just totally taken – you applied the principles and made it totally your own system there. So, And Jen then has the digital plan. So you want to 
see. I'll stop screen sharing and we'll see if Jen can pull up hers. <clears throat> okay, I'll see what I can. I have done both. I've done like the hybrid and then this last month probably I've tr I'm trying all digital and that's been working has been working really well. Um, so for for my long term, more like school planning and book lists and things like that, and for, you know, digital filing, I use Evernote for that. Mm -hmm. But then I've been using Wonderlist for my to dos um, and for all of them, like the projects, the the someday maybes, and the the daily you know one item to dos, and um, and so that has been. I was using, I'll just go over real quick what I have done. Um, so last year I used just mostly Evernote for the digital and then I had a, a plum paper planner which these are nice because you can customize them to some degree. So I had their family planner which actually you can get it categorized and the weekly view. Um, so I had it categorized by my vocations. So okay. the week you have it already categorized and so that was even good for like um, just a memory jogger for seeing every vocation laid out and then it was just you know anytime I would put in something I was automatically plugging it into its right category even on the weekly to do and then if I saw a vocation on there that maybe I had forgotten something about then that would trigger my memory to um, get that you know filled in and so then for earlier this year I switched to uh, Filofax, and I'm really loving that because I, I loved the plum paper, but I didn't like not being able to move pages around, and I always have to tweak things and change them. And <laughs> so with this, I was able to. I bought some planner inserts from Inkwell Press that were really just kind of basic, um, and I was sort of implementing it using sort of like your index card. I was using the weekly. Uh, we can see it here. It's kind of each day is like its own little card almost. <laughs> so that's kind of how I was using it earlier this year. But what I found was um, I just was getting in that mode of not quite, I hadn't quite streamlined it enough and so I was starting to not use it at all and it just wasn't quite suiting and so I was just starting to resist it and um, kind of one of the biggest things one of the biggest reasons I switched to the all digital um, was because I I have had to learn how to apply but definitely roll with the punches just because my health has been a real struggle like mm -hmm. the last nine years fairly intensely but the last two years extremely intensely so I've been like had a lot of just flat out bedridden days over the last two years so that makes it a real challenge to do any hardcore planning. And so what I was finding was I need something that can kind of flex with me a little more. So I was doing, I ended up doing a lot of migrating to the next day. And I realized what I really need is just kind of a list that I can work from and pull in, you know, pick and choose from just based on my energy level. Mm -hmm. So that has been working really well then with Wonderlist. So I even, I, I'll, I'll pull that up now if I figure that out. So I have it on my phone and on my my laptop. Uh, let's see here. Choose. Okay, so if I click on entire, see, I put pull the let up first just to make sure I get it right here. Okay, here we go. Oops. Okay, can you see that? Let's see. No, my still, 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 still not seeing it. Um, huh? I'm not seeing it as a option to choose. If you do um, whole screen, and then if you can see it, we can see it. Okay, I, I will share that, and then I'll go over to that. Okay, now. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. So. Um, what I've just been doing is I, normally I'm using it on my phone so I have my phone with me all the time and that's just been really easy what, so whether I'm laying in bed or I'm up I've got my phone 
handy. And so if I think of something, I can just pop it, pop it right into its right category. So what I've done is I have um, gone through and created folders for each vocation. And then within the folders, I have the lists for um, repeat. I've got the to-dos, the repeating projects, and someday maybe lists within the folder for each vocation. And so then um, I'm able to star the ones I want to get to soon. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I don't have to set a due date, but they'll just pop up in the starred section. Oh. Um, and so then I can just pull from those when I'm able. So, but they're the priorities to get to. And I can even um, add a tag to each task. And uh, so for this one, let's see, let me find one. Yeah, I've never seen their online. I've only seen the app and not the. OK, yeah, this is the one you actually can download it onto yeah. your computer. So OK, so I have like, I have one tag for low energy. So mm -hmm. I can just click on that and pull up any of the tasks that I've tagged as being, and I'm right now I'm all, all low energy, but some days I have a little more than others. And <laughs> so these are like the things I can do when I can't get out of bed. Um, I can still at least be working on something. So um, so that's been really, or things that uh, I can tag all, anything that's online. And usually those go right in line with the stuff that I can only do when I'm on my really low days, because I can usually do something online. So then it, you can pull it up by, by how you've tagged it. So it just gives more flexibility there as well. Um, and so so I can look, so if I do have something I really want to get to like on this day and it's something that is time sensitive like this was, you know, in a, a hard fast time, I can I can set a, a due date and so then I can click on the today view right here and it will bring up anything that is that I have tagged for set for today and if I don't get to it, it is really easy to just, I can go in here and it's really easy to just migrate it to a different day. It comes up here. Uh, when it opens. Okay, so then I would just go over here. If I don't get to it today, I can just click on it and I can either, it's going kind of slow, um, move it to the next day and that will pop up. It'll go off of today's view and it'll show up tomorrow. Or if I don't do anything, it will just, it'll keep showing up, but it'll show the little today here. It will show when it was due. So tomorrow, if, if I if I uh, miss doing something and I miss migrating it, then the next day it will show up that it was due in red that it was due yesterday or, or the further you go, the more it, it adjusts to how far behind you are <laughs> when you should have done it. So, um, but it's easy to, to just either delete the uh, delete a, a due date or or just change it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what else? So, uh, or then I can also view by my week, so I can see what what I want to what I have coming up for the week, and it will bring up. Um, so it'll bring up anything that has a due date or that has a star. So the starred items don't have a hard fast date; they're just things I want to get to as soon as I can, and. Um, and it brings it up, let's see, so in the today view, it actually, I remember, yeah, it actually brings it up categorized um, by the, by vocation or by however you have it categorized. So that's really handy to just keep it all clearly laid out so you can see what you have coming up in each area. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been using that for so a lot of things. It's been my ubiquitous capture tool. Yeah, uh, yeah. I even have so I have a section for myself on there um, for books I want to. I, I know that like uh, books aren't really to dos, but they kind of have fit into that just because I do want to have an action associated with them, like reading them. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I don't have a due date on them. I just put in my, my current you know list of books that I've been wanting to get to reading and then I starred the ones I'm either reading right now or that I yeah those are all the ones I'm reading right now um, just and so then I can 
those will show up on my weekly view, but there's no pressure attached. There's no, they're not popping up in my face every day, um, because I, I, I did definitely a, found what you said to be true is if you load it up too full, then you start ignoring it. <laughs> uh -huh. I found I did I did have to try it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're I, right. I think I've told people about this. It doesn't, doesn't work. work. <laughs> so, um, so I think that kind of gives the basic. Now I am kind of kind of um, tweaking with. How do I get off of the screen? I'll say here we go. Um, so I I am I am still kind of. I'm, I might go back at some point to using this and my Filofax um, just to pull out the starred things if you know and put them in for the day what if I know I'm pretty sure I can manage this this day I can put them right on onto the weekly you know the day in the weekly view on my paper planner um, but because like you say something about writing it down it by hand does actually kind of you remember it it's kind of more Mm -hmm. It hits your brain, um, but it has been working. Even just kind of on the simple level of some days, this it just feels heavy and awkward, yeah. just yeah. because I'm so low. <laughs> and this is just so, you know, just easy to grab and pop something in. When I first tried all digital, I didn't have my phone, and so I was trying to do it all from the computer, and that did not work because I would, I would put it in, and then I would just forget about it. And mm -hmm. so that's why I was using the hybrid. But so far, having my laptop and then my phone kind of replacing the paper planner. And it is a challenge to the, you know, oh, Instagram, you know, oh, Pinterest. Mm -hmm. um, but in some, for some of the things, I have, like, turned off notifications and buried them, like, I have to scroll, you know, three screens in to get to them. <laughs> so it's not right in my face. <laughs> <laughs> A little but, pause. A little pause. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I use this. Like I read my Bible on here. I I have um my um up mo my Charles Spurgeon, you know, morning and evening on here. So it's like this is like my all-in-one handy dandy mother's helper, and I <laughs> just so it's been working. I don't think there's anything else particular. Um, so I've got Evernote on here too, so if I need to, um, so I kind of think of this, I used to think, well, I used to try to think of trying to cram everything into one program so you're not like, oh, you have to open up this for that and this for that, but there are just things that, you know, if you have an app that does something well, it's worth, and so I've, what helped was I kind of think of like, this is my, this is my binder, and right, then the, right. the apps and the things are, just different sections of my binder. Yeah, so. that's a great way to think or, about it. Or my laptop is my binder, and then the tabs that I have open on my screen are just right. kind of like <laughs> my paper. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's good. Really that's good. That keeps me on track and remembering things because brain fog is another big thing, and just um, mm -hmm. but but fluid and flexible. So. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Thanks. All right, Katie. Digital, paper, hybrid? Um, yeah, a little bit of both. Probably mostly paper. I would love to find a good digital to-do list, but I have not found one yet, at least one that I can afford. Um, but so I have my Google Calendar on you know, my phone and computer, and that's how I keep track of all of the Oh, no. Stuff I need to do throughout the week uh -oh. on myself that that um, I need it to be really simple. So otherwise, I won't do it. And I tried like a big binder for a while, and it was just I needed just something that was super easy, easy to grab. And um, so I've seen. I don't know if I can, if you guys can see this, but I have seen other weekly planners around the internet and just made my own. Can you see this okay? Or yeah. Okay. There. Can't read what's in the boxes, but it's a clipboard weekly planner. Yes, and then the, so on this side I have just Monday through Sunday. I start my weekend, and then every morning I look at this, and I like this 
format because I only have like uh, five boxes in each bay, and that means I can only do a few mm -hmm. things. Um, because my kids are all still really little, so they all need me very much still. So I can't do as much as I think I can most days. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I just... And then I have things that we have every week, like I'm on our church's worship team, and so every Wednesday night we have worship practice, and I have that on there. And I like I like having, rather than a, just a plain notebook, like I don't like to rewrite those things every week. I just print it once, you know, and then I can, I don't have to rewrite it every time, so I like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then over here I have like other just random to-dos that I might think of that I need to get done each week. And then, I don't know if you can see this okay. I can't see it on my screen at all, so I don't know. Hopefully you can see it. But I have um, a few habits that I am trying to work on. And, again, I only have spaces for four. That's probably still too many. Yeah. But um, And then I have um, what I want for dinner each night. And then my weekly cleaning loop, which usually doesn't get done. <laughs> and then I. this is something that I uh, recently added because – Especially when we're homeschooling, I'll be, you know, we'll be in the middle of our school day and I'll think, oh, I need to do such and such on the computer. So sometimes if I have a second, I'll run over and try and do it. Well, then I get lost in internet land. So um, I just write down, like, email so-and-so, and then later I can just go through this list and do it all at one time. So that's really helped me a lot. Um, so I look at that every morning, and that I, I also like having, being able to see my whole week at a glance because there's a lot of daily planners like and that just doesn't work for me that's too I need to see I need to sort of plan my week according to how each day goes um, so and then I also have some sheets that I made that from work the plan so I have um, I don't know if you can see this the interval plan big things to accomplish and the tasks that I need to do to accomplish those small things and then habits to work on so just kind of every six weeks or so I like to do that and then, um, and then again, my kids are so little, so I don't have, like one of you mentioned, having all the different post-its for each of your kids. I think that's a great idea, but my kids are still, I do most everything. So, um, but I do have some, can you hear me okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I do have checklists for them, and this one's kind of messy. It's my five-year-olds, but that really helps me. Just I can say, go do what's, and I think Misty, I got this idea from you, but just go do what's on your checklist and then come back when you're done. And that's hopefully as my kids get older, these lists will be <laughs> longer and then I don't have to do so much. But um, I think that's about it. That's all right now. That's all I can handle. So <laughs> Rebecca says that it makes her feel a whole lot better. To, a whole lot better mm -hmm. to know your cleaning doesn't get done either, despite a cleaning loop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looks great. Definitely does not. <laughs> nice to have goals, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, and Heather is asking if um, she can see those sheets sometime. Yeah. Could you send me like a PDF version yeah. of them, and yeah. I can add them as templates because I have templates for all those things in Work the Plan, and we can just add those as additional just ways to format them. Okay. Yeah, great. Yeah. All right. Yeah, everyone does have a totally different style. So clipboard, journal, post-its, it all. That's all great to see different ways. Yeah. And the um, I'm also putting together um, Libby's photos also into Work the Plan, and there will be a blog post also. So. It's, it's great to see different just ways to put it together because there are all kinds of options and it isn't there isn't just one way that works for everybody so finding those ways that appeal to you because if your planner appeals to you you're more likely to actually look at it and it's really the looking at it that makes the biggest difference <laughs> mm -hmm. and we're still using so many of these same fundamental principles and we the same things but we've just implemented in different ways that just yeah. make sense for how we work and how what our family's needs are and such, which I just think is just awesome. Yeah, it is. That's why I didn't want to get too specific on, like, you have to do it this way, because, yeah, you just can be creative and set it up um, in a way that works for you. And you can also try different things, because I know sometimes I was like, I'm tired of doing it this way. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want to try it a different way. And so 
you can just do that and know it's okay. There are different ways that it can work. But knowing that, well, I just have to have, I have to have the weekly review. And I have to have mm -hmm. some note that I'm looking at in the middle of the day. And mm -hmm. um, I think that the weekly, seeing a weekly view, whether that's on an app or on, in a planner or clipboard, is important because the days, the days don't go as planned. But there's time mm -hmm. across the week to say, okay, sometime this week these things can happen. The day might not go, I might think that I want to get to it on Monday, but if something happens, it's not like I've failed because mm -hmm. I didn't do it on Monday. I can do it on Tuesday and it still gets done. Yeah. But it's easy to immediately go, okay, fail. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see, what's, what's the planning thing with the boxes, says Rebecca. Is that Katie's plan? So I think oh. Katie, you put boxes for like the checklist thing. So you only gave yourself a certain number of check boxes. Yes. Yep. Um, and I just made this in Word. So or is she talking about the computer one maybe? Or or maybe it was Amber's bullet mm -hmm. journal. I'm not sure. <laughs> But there's the replay, too. So, Amber, how did your boxes work? I think someone else asked about that also. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. Oh, the boxes. So on my weekly time budget, um, yeah. that was... So it's really just... It's like um, an, you know, an Excel spreadsheet with all the little columns and, and cells in it. And so I just have it labeled from... Um, you know, It's half-hour intervals from 5.30 in the morning to 9.30 at night, and then... I'm just drawing little squares, and um, I thought it's about showing. You know, it's all in pencil. It just nobody'd be able to see anything, but I could, <laughs> I, I, it's something I could scan and put up. But if I try to like hold it up from the camera, you can see anything. But um, but that's so. May, that has been really really helpful for me to and so be and because it's in paper. I'm really limited, but you know, I'm limited, you know, my time is limited, you know, those little boxes you can type and type and type and then when it's on the computer, but when you are really just dealing with the, the little physical paper, um, you can only go so far. <laughs> it brings those limitations, like, nope, you really are. That's what the index card does, too. You say, nope, yes. nope, you just have this little to-do list, not a whole 9 by 11. Sorry. Right. But boy, I've been really good at writing really, really small recently, and that's not been a good habit. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm really only supposed to have, like, three, maybe five things in this box, and instead I've got ten. There's a problem here. <laughs> and that's what I'm looking for, too. I'm getting really good at writing small with a dry erase pen, even. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, I, I was wondering, Misty, can I share a quote here? I was actually doing some reading and uh, to prepare for the um, tomorrow night for our 20 principles discussion, but um, and I just happened upon this quote from, uh, so this is from Charlotte Mason from Volume 2, and it says, The labor of the mother who sets herself to understand her work is not increased, but infinitely lightened. And then I'm abridging here a little bit. A little painstaking thought and effort in the first place, and all comes easy. And I just love that because I think that it, it definitely is, is work to set it up, but once you do have it, you know, yeah, there's the there's mental effort of and the to just get yourself to do the right thing, but the more you're starting to do the right thing, the more you keep doing the right thing, and the more that, that becomes easy to make good choices. Um, which is just like what we tell our kids, but it's so true for us as well. Uh, that we just we need to be in the habit of doing the next the next right thing and doing what we're supposed to be doing um, mm -hmm. and that it makes so much difference to spend that time ahead of time a little bit of time not trying to create something that's perfect but creating something that makes sense for it follows the principles takes care of these key areas and then you can go forward in that yeah well that's an excellent quote too and it also brings it, it's hard at first but it's worth it and it starts paying off the more you just keep at it Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it definitely gets so much easier because I, I, I know I've been doing. I started doing like the weekly time budget and uh, oh, and one thing I want to say that if if somebody's having trouble doing like a weekly time budget, um, try doing a week where you track all of your time because yeah. you will be amazed at how long it actually takes to make dinner, fold laundry, 
just, you know, the, the changing the diapers, the doing whatever, um, mm -hmm. and how much buffer you need to build into your day for all of those things. Because um, I was not able to do a time budget until I did that, and I, I finally went, okay, fine, I'll do this. I'll yeah. do track my time for a week, and I just was you know, scribbling it down, and then I went and tallied all, and it was amazing. And so now I, I block, okay, I'm going to take an, you know, a whole hour for breakfast, and we're going to spend an hour and a half kind of between kids helping with doing chores and doing dinner prep, and it's like, that's just what it takes. And, you know, I don't necessarily like that. I wish it didn't have to take that long, but that's just life, and I need to just roll with that. And and since I've accepted some of those, that, that really it takes as long as it takes and not it takes as long as I want it to take inside my head, um, life has been much happier. <laughs> it's another <laughs> good thing. It is. It really is. Because, yeah, it's easy to get into planning mode and think, okay, well, I plan for it to take this long, and so that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And when it's just not reality. And then that makes everyone uptight and anxious. And yep. Yeah. It says already, we're already at almost 2.30, but if you can stay, if you, so if you have to hop off, I understand. <laughs> but there was just one really good question that I wanted to get your guys' um, some different ideas from you guys. And that was someone asked, so you have this plan. How do you communicate that with the kids? Because we all, I was like, I make the plan, there's this big picture, but we all need to be doing things. And I'm kind of like the director all day long. So how, how do you fit that into your day or into your plan, helping the kids see what the plan is and for them to not feel, you know, totally bossed around, especially if they're older. Like toddlers, we just have to boss around. <laughs> but how do you get buy-in from your kids and help them be a part of the plan? Anyone? Um, I, I can go first if you want. So I have a wall calendar that is where I write out. So it's a monthly view calendar, and I write down uh, all of our just things out of the house, um, people's birthdays, stuff the kids would be interested in knowing about. If we have travel stuff, whatever, um, it is, it's all there. So they have a place that they can look at, and I just do it at the beginning of the month. I have a little monthly reminder and to-doist that, you know, update the family calendar. And so uh, they can always see that. Um, and then I have to remember to add, if things come up in the month, I have to remember to add them to it. But I, I'm usually pretty good at that. And then um, the other thing I do is I try to every day have a, I have another um, picture frame and just has white in the background. And I use a dry erase marker on the glass. And I just write out, this is the day's schedule. Um, here's here's kind of what we're, you know, between breakfast and then morning time and, and then kind of like here's a work block for school and then here's your playtime block and a lunch block and then more and it's they have other schedules where it's broken the school time is broken up more more granularly but I don't want to write that every single day um, uh, then they it's like okay and here's our we pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet at three and then we do our we have our we go and like in summer right now, we'll do a, a summer skills time after that and have a snack and summer skills. And so they have a sense of the flow of the day, um, and that has been really helpful for them. Especially, I, I have, it's interesting kind of personalities within my kids. There's one kid in particular who just loves that, and then another one who's like, there's something written up there? Wait, and then you've had this for a long time, and it's like, totally. wait, Oh, is that is that different today? <laughs> is there something there? Um, and then another one who who uses it, but it's not as like fundamental to that child's happiness. But um, but that's been really really helpful for being able to keep everything moving along. And then in terms of like when we're in school mode or even with our summer skills, right now we just have a weekly checklist. Of, these are things that we're working towards during this time slot. Um, and then but during the school year they have their their weekly list as well. And so. But they can see where, where on the day they would be expected to be making, doing work that would fit into those checklists rather than just handing the checklist and go, okay, have at it. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Who else? We, um, well, that's actually an area that I'm trying to tweak and perfect a little bit right now. Um, but we have a whiteboard. We have a kind of a pretty basic routine that doesn't change a lot. Um, but uh, I do try to give them a heads up if something's coming up or if I have something planned for the week that I want to focus on, like uh, 
particular project, house project or something. And um, we, but then we just have a whiteboard in the kitchen, and so sometimes I'll fill that out. That's kind of been a good way for me to communicate with them um, on the days when I can't get up. So like the night before, I'll I'll write out tomorrow. Here's what we want to accomplish tomorrow, so they can see it in the morning. Um, um, I do want to get a calendar. That's actually something I've been on my list to get a, because most of mine do like kind of knowing what's coming, my older ones at least, like to kind of have an idea of what's coming up. Um, and then for their school, they just have their 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 checklists. Um, we actually keep those digitally because they have, um, they each have a Kindle Fire that we have locked down with all the parental controls and no internet access and everything. Um, so within that, I've been able to share. We've been using a program where I can share their checklists and everything. So I can create everything on my end and then share it out to the kids without right. having to worry about printing or losing yeah. papers or things like that because um, they don't lose their tablets. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been great. They have their, you know, their, it's a Kindle, so they've got their, a lot of their books are on there. Um, it's got Audible, so they've got their audio book. You know, so it's been a really, for them too, it's been a handy tool to have and then, you know, I can control what games are allowed. You know, I can, um, mm -hmm. so, so that's been really good because even, it even has a chat feature. So if I'm, you know, up in, in my room, um, they can still message me. And so it's just like an in-house private family <laughs> <laughs> Facebook kind of a thing, but, you know, just, just us. So yeah. they're not out on the dangerous Internet. Um, so that's been handy for me being able to just kind of, See how, even how like I, I can see their lists as they're, if they're getting checked off or not through the day, and I can give them a nudge, you know, like have you done this? So that's been helpful for us. But again, it's just something we have, have to kind of learn to be fluid, kind of have a plan, but roll with it <laughs> on the days where it doesn't go so well. <laughs> yeah. That's a, which what um, app do you use for doing the kids? Um, check? It, it's one. It's called Quip. And it's actually for companies to that like they use in house like like mm -hmm. uh, I think Pinterest uses it and um, so uh, it's been working really well. The only thing I have to say is I just found because like e even like with the lockdown um, child you know protection things on there sometimes in apps there's a little backdoor access. So we've been uh -huh. using it for almost a year now. Very I mean it's been we've been using it for tons of things. It's been a great tool for the whole family. Um, but I just found, I was just looking through the, one of their tablets the other day, clicking around, and I found a backdoor access to Google. So, <laughs> I have to, so I can't really recommend it at this point. Now on the Apple, like on my, so they have, th those are Android Fire tablets, and that's slipping through the cracks on there, but I did test it on my iPhone, and it was blocking it with, okay. with the parental controls on. Uh, so, and on the, if you have it on a laptop with, you know, whitelisted thing, it would probably work okay on there. But sometimes with the apps, you have to watch out for back door so we're gonna have to think of my husband's a programmer so I have him on it trying to think of a way to <laughs> like, <laughs> I might have to I might be losing that whole system so that might I might be about to head into a whole tweak that's <laughs> no one's gonna be happy about <laughs> so they haven't found it yet so it's really buried in there but <laughs> But I don't want to leave that you know, accidental access. Yeah. Yeah. You never know when they will. <laughs> and that's why it's good to always go through and be checking. Yes. Stuff. Yeah. So that's the one caveat. You have to really be diligent in looking through everything to make sure it's safe. How about Libby or Katie keeping kids on board with you? Wow. Um, go ahead. Oh, that's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I just do similar things. They have a calendar on the wall that I put events on, and I have a dry erase board that I write on any special thing for the day. And But most of it is just routine, having consistent things that we do throughout the day and a sort of normal structure to the day and um, things that we do on different days of the week. So they kind of know the pattern for those things. If there's a change to those, I'll talk to them about it or write it on one of those mechanisms. Or, and um, was it in the work the plan? There was one of the ones where Misty, you talked about getting your kids on board and having a little talk with them about this is how this is going to work and trying to. I think that's so helpful with older kids to talk to them about the goals and what you're trying and why you're trying to do it. 
Um, so often that'll happen in our morning time. We have a morning mm -hmm. time. We, uh, and that actually came about for us through the interval process, doing interval reviews. I realized I wanted certain things to come first in the day. And so I rearranged our day and we started the day off with a walk so that we could all get fresh air and a lot more movement at the front end of the day. And then we'd come home and do morning prayer together. And that's when I'll give them any instructions for the day. Anything, there's something special happening today or we're going to move your screen time to a different time of day or whatever it is. Um, I'll give them any kind of special instructions. And if I don't, they let me know because at least one of them will be dying to know what's happening exactly when and what they have to bring. And um, so they generally ask a lot of questions and I more need to write everything down so that I don't have to keep answering them. <laughs> but I can say, did you look in the dry erase board? Like, did you check the calendar? <laughs> I'll just let them know during morning time otherwise. Katie Stern. Uh, it's about the same as um, what she said. I My kids, like I said, my, my oldest is seven. So, and she's really the one who even cares. You know, my five-year-old is to care less about all that stuff. Um, so yeah, we just have a dry erase board that I write things down, and then um, my oldest has her own checklist, and then they have their just their morning routine and chore checklist, and then after that, the five-year-old pretty much has free reign, so we don't have to do too much with that yet. And then I guess in morning time during the school year, I will go over the day's schedule if anything is unusual, but ours is pre pretty typically the same every day, so. Mm -hmm. I think the that helps. Are you yeah, go ahead. The more you do stuff, the easier it gets. That yeah. you know, having those rails to run on, setting something up is hard, and getting them used to something, especially if it's something that isn't appealing to them, is hard. So I try and think it through. If there's a change of how is it going to be for them, and try and find a way. Like, how can our day be pleasant? <laughs> how can how can we structure things so that we have enough energy, and so that we can have a good mix of active and passive and um, I think it, so it's hard to get it established, but if you, the forethought, just like what Amber was saying, a little forethought goes a long way in working to set it up in a way that will work and be sustainable and pleasing and satisfying for everybody, and that just gets them on board so much more. And then the more consistently you're able to do it, the easier it is. You don't have to keep blazing the trail as hard, but just walking on the path to the place where you need to go isn't so hard at all. And then, the more consistently we do it, the easier it is. Is that your experience too? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sometimes it takes longer than you'd like, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. And it takes me time to get consistent, and then it takes longer after that for it to rub off on the kids, where they stop trying to, you know, like, ooh, if we, you know, if we just go do something else when mom doesn't notice, then... Yeah. The plan is, direct, you know, they're trying to just get get their own. If they know they can derail it and mm -hmm. the day's easier for them if they do, then mm -hmm. that's what they're going to do because we all just want to do what's easy. So mm -hmm. it takes, you know, me saying, no, I'm going to do the right thing myself and then then make them do the right thing. And so, well, I'm going to do what's ever easy for me, but I'm going to make sure you do <laughs> what I want you to be doing. But we're I'm, all just trying to default to what's easy. And so we all have to I'm be working easy. against that. I'm so easy for them to convince. Just any day, I would always rather, you know, go swimming and have an ice cream cone than <laughs> do housework ever, ever, ever. Yeah. But an another thing that really helps is just being ready. The more prepared I am and the more I've thought through and I don't have to go somewhere else to get something or yes. think through something and I don't know the details of it, the more prepared I am. Uh, it's, especially if you're starting something new that you know that there'll be resistance to, you want to introduce it in the most homely and appealing way possible and have everything all ready to go so that there's no reason for it to not happen. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Has to be grab and go. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for sharing with us. And thank you, everyone, who joined and asked questions and shared their ideas, too. This was so much fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And everyone will get replay links. Everyone will get replay links and all of that. Um, you'll get one right, right away, and then 
tomorrow I'll send out one that you can actually fast forward. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you everyone. All right, thanks thank for having you. us.